uh, uh, I or my colleagues will be able to answer. Uh, let me read the statement on behalf of the party. In the last few days, Kenyans received surprising revelations in Parliament on the security support to Deputy President William Ruto, amounting to 257 taxpayer-paid officers. Our Deputy President is easily having the biggest number of security detail in the whole world, at least in the democratic world. No previous second-in-command in Kenya comes even close. His demands for security were always and have always been met by, met by the government. From when the Deputy President took office in 2013, he demanded proposing half the Cabinet. That is when the rain started beating us. His proposals were too biased ethnically and it left President Uhuru Kenyatta with no option but to work with the remaining half to accommodate the rest of Kenyans. These unfortunate demands of the Deputy President would extend to other senior political appointments in government for the whole of the 2013-2017 circle. Deputy President William Ruto exhibited an amazing level of short-sightedness short by failing to appreciate the fact that even those Kenyans belonging to other ethnic communities that did not vote for the Uhuru Kenyatta government were at the end of the day still Kenyans who had a right to services and to opportunity to work and to do business with the government of Kenya. This is an element of to serve all Kenyans without fear or favor oath of office that both the Deputy President and the President have to take on assumption of office. It is an open political secret that in the first term of the presidency of President Uhuru Kenyatta, the, the Deputy President William Ruto possessed some quote-unquote political blackmail stock options that he used to his great personal advantage. Kenyans have heard ad nauseum about these political blackmail stock options always coming in the form of, oh, we have the numbers in Parliament, complete with pictures profiling these numbers at his current residence or in Naivasha or wherever, where bodyguards and drivers are sometimes added to bolster the numbers. During the 2013-2017 cycle, this blackmail was subtle and in private. It is not about numbers. This political speak, in political speak, this I can say, this you can say, is to say I can pull out the support of my tribe if you do not get this for myself, if I do not get this for myself. It would probably be excusable if it is about support for the tribe, but it's now becoming clear for all Kenyans to see that it is about self. Ubunafsi na ulafi wahali aju. Unfortunately, for the so-called UDA, political blackmail stock options have a battery life and have a shelf life. Through it all, President Uhuru Kenyatta has remained focused on the big picture for the good of Kenya, implementing the Big Four agenda and securing peace and stability through inclusion, because without peace, no development and prosperity can be sustainable in our country. We believe that our president has been very tolerant and has accommodated his past behavior and demands as a statesman whose mission is to make Kenya viable by uniting our country. The president continues to focus on the big picture and we congratulate him for that. We believe that our president has been very tolerant indeed. The blackmail stock options expiry date was immediately after the 2017 elections. The battery died after the handshake because the numbers game and the blackmail of withdrawal of tribal numbers lost 
political potency at that time. This is the truth that all Kenyans should know. Not only can the DP no longer blackmail Kenyans, the people of Kenya will not accept to be blackmailed. In this latest saga on his security detail, would like to congratulate our deputy party leader, William Ruto, for his honesty to admit that he himself is a very rich hustler. Mgala, muwe, lakini hakiake, mpe, as the Swahili people would say. It was an admirable display of optics and demeanor of humility before his real self and ego came back as he launched a scathing social media attack executed by his foul-mouthed political mouthpieces and bloggers with most of the vitriol directed at the person and family of the founding father of our nation, Mze Jomo Kenyatta, who is not here to defend himself. As a party, we are sending the Deputy President William Ruto a public message that we will not countenance his venturing into crossing this line of referring to the family of the president, the late president Mzee Jomo Kenyatta. He must call his goons to order. We continue to resist a lot of provocation luring us to go into the slimy and smelly social pigsty that some of his people occupy. But we have the truth on our side and Kenyans will be made to know the truth. By his own account, the deputy president is on video record when he told Kenyans that he was worth 100 million Kenya shillings sometime in the year 2015. In the intervening seven years, he has worked very hard in his businesses and now therefore he has assets like choppers, hotels and land worth billions of shillings. We would like to congratulate His Excellency Dr. William Ruto for being able to make such amazing strides in business even as he was studying for his PhD concurrently with running a multi-billion shilling empire and carrying the heavy burden of working as number two in, a, in command and being involved in presidential campaigns on his Sundays, still sparing time to do arambes from his hard and sweat money. From our records, he has, more, he has been more generous than Safaricom and some other blue chip companies. Maybe for such major feat, he expects us to lie prostrate in awe as the great deputy leader in admiration for such prowess, the chosen one. But as, but as our leader, we would like to make the following requests that we consider to be legitimate, stemming from the proceedings in the last few days. One, while the exact average of what he said to own may still be debatable, he has accepted the ownership of at least 3,600 acres. Most of our hustler nation citizens, as he calls them, are only hoping or dreaming to own 0.2 acres. We do not expect him to give his personal land, but given his good heart and in the spirit of Chinese saying that, say, do not give fish, but show somebody how to fish, he can greatly help here. May it please his Excellency, the Deputy President, Dr. William Ruto, EGH, UPL, DL, CH, to show these our young people all the skills on how to acquire such property in such a short time. He should teach us, the clueless adults in this country, how we can do the same. We may not possess the supernatural powers of hard work that he has, but at least he should teach us something else apart from the wheelbarrows. Show us another way to perform such miracles. Number two, we would like to, th would like to thank the Deputy President William Ruto and congratulate him for telling us about his chicken farm that makes for him 
some 1.5 million shillings every day. We thank him because his generosity that adds up to millions at different churches and transport money paid to his many visitors at his current residence was not adding up actually. People of goodwill may, be even, may even have thought of making a contribution. But with an income of 1.5 million shillings a day, our Deputy President is okay. The only thing left in his wonderful act of transparency, transparency is for him to show us the figures with respect to his very big payment to Kenya Revenue Authority. A great leader should lead from the front. We request that as a person who is also a good Bible quoting born again Christian, he will shame the devil and public, publicly give all Kenyans this information. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what belongs to God. Mark 12, 17. And then there's a small matter of Aror Kimwarer saga. The deputy party leader and the deputy president told Kenyans that only 7 billion shillings had disappeared. His own daughter was the deputy ambassador in Rome at that time. To our knowledge, this money has never been returned by the Italians. Since he has got some private business networks in Italy that he had gone to meet, would, would he be so kind to this nation of poor people, nation of hustlers according to him, as to use his vast business networks to recover this money? It is a lot of money even though he referred to the figure as 7 billion only. Even with the deepest chicken farm, in, farm income of 1.5 million net a day, it will take some 13 years before that chicken farm produces 7 billion shillings. But that we will may be beside the point. We request a truthful response of the Deputy President to these matters raised for the sake of Kenyans. The time is over for cheap media spinning, spin doctoring, as we witnessed recently when he said that he could accept for G4S security. Now that we know that G4S are his standard, it should be easy to calculate the price per carry who are posted to his private properties during the era of blackmail stock options and have it paid to the Kenyan taxpayers. Maybe he can also extend this little refund to Anjiku and the hustlers. I think that's the end of the press release.